We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit tonight and dunamis power. I feel like we have a real need to build our relationship with the Holy Spirit. This message doesn't get old. It just gets bigger, better, deeper. I think I'm going to tell you some things tonight that you probably haven't heard before about Holy Spirit. Okay? And the power he brings with him, which is dunamis. Amen? I see miracles like crazy. I'm so grateful <laughs> that we see these miracles. And, but they're all through the action of the Holy Spirit. It's not me working them. I'm just like a player on the chessboard. I'm just there submitting myself to God and the Holy Spirit. And then Holy Spirit is doing the work with dunamis power. And we see a lot of amazing things. I mean, I just had a girl in prison. We don't have the footage of this one because we weren't allowed to bring cameras in. And uh, she had crushed her heel in a car accident and had like bolt screws, um, things in her foot to try to rebuild and reconstruct her foot after the accident. And one of the screws in the back of the heel got dislodged. It was trapped underneath her skin and it was causing a big bulge to come out. And you could actually take your finger and feel the screw underneath the layers of skin. And it was gross and they used the word disgusting and all of that. And God did a miracle for her. He took the screw out completely, just made it disappear. And I called up three of her friends to testify because they wouldn't let us bring in a metal detector either on that event. And so I called up three of her friends to testify. I asked, I asked, have you ever seen the screw or felt it? And they all three had. They'd seen it and felt it. They said, you could feel the head of the screw. They described it and everything else. I said, now feel her heel now. And they reached down there and they, they looked at me like, wow, it's gone. It's not there anymore. So, I mean, I've seen stuff like that. That's becoming normal. I saw a woman with a, a pin in her leg, a rod, like this long, this long from a skiing accident. And she came up and she was so healed. She touched her knee to her face. I said, give me that anointing. I mean, you know, it's just like crazy stuff happening. Um, you know, I saw a guy that, uh, angels came down with body parts and uh, on one of these trays that they were carrying was a knuckle. A knuckle. So little did I know, there's a guy in the meeting, this is in prison, you know, and he had punched people out. He had punched this guy out. And he had hit him so hard that it shattered his knuckle. And all the pieces, like, got absorbed into his skin. And you could see, like, the big scar there where it happened. He'd gone to the hospital. They're like, we can't do nothing for you except put a metal one in. And thank God he said no. So he never had a knuckle after that. So he's at the meeting, and here comes the angels, and nobody sees him but me. I'm like, there was this one guy, right? The, <laughs> they got a new spine and my volunteers were standing at the side of the stage and they didn't know the angels were there. And they're watching this guy in the back of his shirt's going like this. It's flapping because the angels are back there putting the, the neck in. Anyway, the metal disappeared. But the guy with the knuckle, right? He, he's like, okay, wow, you know, great. This is a great meeting. He leaves. He doesn't realize anything's happened. He goes to bed line. He's cracking his knuckles, and he realizes he now has a knuckle. He totally has a knuckle. I have it on video, okay? And it's like, it was crazy. He goes, he comes up to testify, and you can see the scar and everything. He tells the story. And there was a guy that was, there was kind of heckling us. It's like, I don't believe it. He wasn't there when all the big miracles happened. He came afterwards because he heard about it. He goes, I don't believe it. He goes, do it again. I go, I didn't do it in the first place. <laughs> you know? And, and so I said, well, let's take some testimony. So anybody who's naysaying will believe. And I said, who knew this guy before? This miracle happened to him. And then the guy's raised his hand. He comes up there and goes, I knew him. I said, so did you hear the story? He goes, yeah, I heard the story. He goes, did he not have a knuckle? He goes, he didn't have no knuckle. I said, and now? He goes, he got a knuckle. <laughs> Look, I see a lot of miracles. I'm so privileged. I'm so glad. You can do it too. Okay, because it's not you. It's the Holy Spirit. All right, so let's talk about it. Amen. Look, when you were born again, you received a free gift, Holy Spirit. He's actually called the gift. He came in to live in you and never leave you, never forsake you, be there 24 and 7, be your comforter, your counselor, your advocate. He's always there. Okay? And he's always ready to help. He's always ready to strengthen you, to solve problems and everything else. But we need to lean more on him and rely more on him. And we need to build build our relationship with Holy Spirit. He's in there 24 and 7. So let me ask you, if you had a friend that was handcuffed to you and they were walking around with you 24 and 7 and you never talked to them, would you value your friendship? Would you get a little tired? 
Would you think, wow, this person never even talks to me. They don't even care about me. They don't even want to have a conversation with me. Would you think those kinds of thoughts? Well, how many of you are not talking to the Holy Spirit on a daily basis? He is your best friend. How many of you read that scripture in oh, 1 Corinthians 2.10? I love it in the Amplified. This is what it says. Ready? It says, the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and the things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. Okay, wow. How many of you ever, ever, ever had that where you said, what's going on, God? Why is this happening? How many people said that? Right? Well, instead of saying that, do this. Holy Spirit, find out what's going on. Because see, that's one of his jobs. It says right here, he diligently searches, explores, examines everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. You know, a lot of things are hidden from us. We're like, what is this? Why is this happening? What is the source of this? What, is this a spirit? Is this me? Is this my soul? Is this this? What is it? What is going on? Well, Holy Spirit finds out what? The hidden things. The things beyond our scrutiny. We have to put Holy Spirit more to work. He's bored to death. Okay? You need to put him to work. Instead of going, why God, why? Or I wonder why this is happening. Send Holy Spirit to find out. He'll go out and it says he'll explore and he'll diligently search out the things. He'll even go and get the profound, bottomless, divine counsels of God. That's what that scripture says. If you need revelation, you need divine counsel. Stop whining. To, I, I, I say whining gently. Whining. <laughs> to God about it. Ask Holy Spirit to go get it. He wants to go get it. He's there 24 and 7 and he wants to help you figure out what the deal is. Okay. Holy Spirit's an expert at all that. So let's lean more on him and rely more on him to do those things for us. You know, I know we're all worshiping and praising and thanking Holy Spirit for his presence, and that's awesome. But now let's put him to work. Amen? Okay, now, when Holy Spirit came into you, he didn't come alone. He brought power with him. That power is called dunamis. Everybody say dunamis. See, Holy Spirit isn't power. A lot of people confuse Holy Spirit. They think he is power. He's not power. He's a person. He's the third person of the Trinity, and he has the mind of God. He's the smarty pants. But Holy Spirit, when he came into you, he didn't come alone. He brought power with him. Okay, I mean, just some biblical examples. I mean, just with Mary. Remember when Mary got pregnant? She was a virgin, and she got pregnant. She had the Christ child. How did it happen? The Bible says in Luke 1 that she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and power. See, Holy Spirit and and power. Holy Spirit doesn't come alone. He brings power with him. Same with Jesus. In Acts 10 38, it says, God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was leading him to do the will of the Father. And then when he came across a problem or a healing that needed to take place, Holy Spirit would work through Jesus to release this power that comes with Holy Spirit to cause the miracles to happen. Even for us, in Acts 1.8, it says that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. So see, Holy Spirit isn't alone in this game. He brings power with him. Now, in all three of those scriptures and in others, that word power is the Greek word dunamis. Everybody say dunamis. Dunamis is very important. And dunamis, Holy Spirit, has the mind of God, and he understands the will of God. And he, he's, like I said, he's the brains of the operation. And whenever you ask him to go and explore and search out and find out something that's going on in your life and get you an answer to a problem or a situation, he goes and he does. He goes out and he finds out the, what the root of that thing is, why that sickness is happening to you, why you're broke like a joke. And he finds out the answer. He brings you the revelation. And then he applies this power called dunamis to that specific place that he's discovered is the source or the root of that issue and, and fixes it with the power he brings with him. Now, this is really important. See, dunamis, if you look at the word dunamis in the scripture, it means a lot of things. One thing it means is power and influence that belongs to riches and wealth. Go look it up in your strongs. 
Dunamis power means power and influence that belongs to riches and wealth. See, right now, Holy Spirit lives in you with dunamis. You have a tank full of Holy Spirit and dunamis power. So let's say you have a broke like a joke thing. You're not, you can't figure out why. I'm tithing. I'm doing this. I'm doing everything I can. Why am I still not prospering? What is the problem? Well, there could be something in your bloodline you don't know about. There could be a behavior, like maybe you're not a very good steward, and that's stopping your blessing from coming. There's something that's happening, and you can't figure it out because it's, as 1 Corinthians 2.10 says, beyond your scrutiny, hidden from you. But Holy Spirit goes and he finds out the hidden things and the things beyond men's scrutiny, doesn't he? That's what the scripture says he does. So he goes and he finds out that thing that's hidden from you, that's blocking you from going to the next level, that's, that's preventing you from having a manifestation of a financial increase. He finds that root, he reveals it to you, lets you know, you're reading the Bible, you get a download, you're in worship, all of a sudden you think, oh, that's it, I just figured it out. No, you didn't just figure it out. Holy Spirit figured it out for you and he released it to you, Amen. But then when that happens, and he goes and he finds out that thing that's hidden from you, that was beyond your scrutiny, then he applies dunamis to it. So if you're broke, like a joke, and you don't know why, ask the Holy Spirit to go figure out why. Is there something, my my attitude, my this, my that, am I doing something, is it in my my bloodline? And when he comes back and he tells you what it is, and say, okay, Holy Spirit, awesome, I I won't do that thing anymore, and now release dunamis on that. And he does, and dunamis, one of the meanings is the power and influence that belongs to riches and wealth. So he releases riches and wealth into that situation. Power and influence that comes with riches and wealth. How many of you know it's not just wealth you want, you want influence. You want to be influential. I have now made it cool to be in prison ministry. I have influenced the public. Public normally would be like, oh, let them be in there. They, They need to stay in there. They committed a crime. Who cares if they ever get out? And prison ministry was always the last thing on the list. Oh, the only people that did prison ministry were the cons. Just saying. And we're always the last one to get the money. No, not anymore. Because I have influenced over society to show them, look, prison ministry is the hip ministry now to support now. Go in with me and see metal disappear from people's bodies. How fun is that? People are now coming in. I show up at a prison meeting, and you know what happens? All these people are there waiting for me. Hey, we came to volunteer. Now I see the mamas and the housewives and the other people that would never step foot in a prison coming in to be in prison ministry with me because I have power and influence that belongs to riches and wealth because I've got the Holy Spirit with dunamis power in me. And that dunamis is working. It's creating wealth. It's creating influence. It's causing me to be able to change the way society thinks about prison ministry.